you're a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. There, there is a possibility on the other side of this that that uh, inflation could be could actually be quite low. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and I'm ashamed to say that in 20 years of doing this, I've never been more ashamed than I am right now to call myself a real estate professional. The amount of over optimism and foolish, reckless optimism is absolutely crushing consumers. Now, unfortunately, guys, if you're a realtor, I'm going to be honest with you. We have been betraying consumers by allowing them and helping them to betray themselves. The fact of the matter is, is fear sells houses. Caution gets censored and it's caution over the biggest financial transaction of our lives. Very hard for me to understand this, but regardless, you guys, in approximately two weeks, we are fixing to have our first round of foreclosure wave. I used to ask myself all the time, why haven't the foreclosures gotten even worse than they are right now? And I understand that there's really not a necessity for foreclosures, that people, most people that are in distress, as long as they purchase before 2022, can just sell their house, right? They have enough equity. But nevertheless, we should have still seen the foreclosure numbers get worse, but we didn't see that. So again, you guys, I had to ask myself, why in the face of skyrocketing chapter 13 bankruptcies, which is homeowner bankruptcies, skyrocketing defaults with all consumer debts, why aren't foreclosures getting worse? When we look at this chart, we can see that the delinquency rate is only 3.29%. That is historically low. The average is around 4.55. So we are under where we are normally at. In order to answer this question, I had to start with where the problem was coming from. And essentially the reason for the lack of delinquencies is the CARES Act. The CARES Act basically created COVID-19 forbearance agreements. And right now, you guys, out of all the people in serious delinquency right now, 70% of people in serious delinquency are protected by some type of forbearance plan. Let me show you guys. This all started with the CARES Act being passed on March 25th of 2020 and signed into law March 27th of 2020. Now this provided $150 billion in relief. Now this was for all necessary expenditures incurred due to the public health emergency. So again, the fact that people are still able to get forbearance agreements from is shocking because it's 2023. Now, this was supposed to have been expenses that were incurred during the period of March 1st to 2020, all the way to December 31st of 2022. Think about that for a second. So 11 months ago, People were still able to qualify, but that's not all, you guys. They actually extended that forbearances through May 31st of 2023. Let me read a couple of these paragraphs on what has been going on exactly and why foreclosures have been so low. Starting with the first one, COVID-19 forbearance on FHA insured single family mortgages. The COVID-19 forbearance options for FHA single family insured mortgages extensions will end, and here's the big part, November 30th, 2023 in about two weeks there will be no more extensions and i'll argue this had this should have happened when we started 2022 but they kept extending it you guys and again it is going to end you can see there november 30th of 2023 and i'm going to show you the massive effects that has already started to happen with the forbearance plan. But let me read this. The last day that borrowers can apply for either forbearance options is May 31st of 2023. And again, I'm going to show you how that's actually deteriorated forbearance plans right now. FHA standard forbearance options will still be available for borrowers who encounter difficulties in making their mortgage payments. Homeowners should contact their mortgage services for payment assistance options after May 31st, 2023. So what this is saying is it's like all of the all of the fancy COVID forbearance stuff is gone. You're going to be stuck with normal forbearance agreements, which is generally just a 40 year loan. When it was happening, they were forgiving entire portions of the principal. People were saving 30% on their payment. You guys, that's gone.
in two weeks, it's over. I really didn't understand the impact of the CARES Act until we entered 2023. When we entered 2023, it became very evident that there was still an, an overwhelming amount of excess money that was still in our economy, different sectors in our economy. And again, one of those places is loan modification. Let me now show you guys the stats on how many people are actually on these plans and how many of these people are gonna be stuck potentially facing foreclosure in as little as two weeks. All right, let's start here with mortgage performance. Now, Black Knight does a really good job at keeping their hands to the pulse of what's going on with forbearances. Also, FHFA has some great stats, but really I just wanna read the third paragraph down. With serious delinquency volumes historically low and foreclosure protections still widespread, still widespread, near-term foreclosure risk remains muted, no doubt contributing to the 20.4% decline in September starts. So that's why, you guys, we have been seeing such low foreclosures. Let me read the second paragraph. What's more, 70% of those serious delinquencies remain protected from foreclosure. Again, here's the slap in the face for me, okay? And this was like, oh my gosh, why did it take me so long to figure out that the CARES Act was literally protecting 70% of the people that should be in foreclosure? They're, they're protected. Again, 70% of those serious delinquencies remain protected from foreclosure by forbearance, bankruptcy, or other loss mitigation. Shocking, guys. 70%. I want to try to understand how many people are potentially going to be forced into foreclosure and how that would impact the housing market from an inventory standpoint. Because remember, guys, a lot of the prices are being propped up because of the limited amount of affordable housing. So when we get inventory back, it's very safe to assume that prices will go down as inventory goes up. So let me show you first where we're at with active existing inventory. Here's the Fed economic data right here for housing inventory active unit counts. Now this just updated a few days ago. It actually went up in October. So we are having inventory growth during the winter months, but we're sitting at right now as far as active inventory for existing homes, this is not counting new construction, very important that you understand that, is 737,000 units. This is the current status of COVID-19 related forbearances. So only the people that have been protected through these CARES Act programs. And really the only thing that we need to pay attention to is the slivers in green. Everything else is pretty much paid or removed or people that just took advantage of the programs. When we count active forbearance terms, the extended ones right here, the extended people are the people that cannot get caught up. Those are the people that are going to get hit the hardest. November 30th comes around because if they're late, like they probably are going to be late, it's foreclosure next. Again, this is the extended amount right here, 197,000. But we also have another 156,000 households that cannot get out of forbearance. And I wanna tell you guys, we already have over 200,000 foreclosures. So when we add those two together, this is separate from the already existing foreclosures. That's a total of 353,000 homeowners. If all of those came on the market right away, that would give us an increase of 40% more inventory. You guys, we can get inventory literally overnight once things start breaking. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you my forecast on what I think is going to happen next with foreclosures. And I think you guys are going to be awfully surprised on what my opinions are moving forward. Now I want to show you guys how the performing forbearance plans right now are absolutely unraveling because there's no training wheels. There's no more lifeline left to basically pay these people's mortgages for them. Let me show you right now. This may look a little confusing, but let me explain this to you. We're going to start all the way to the right. Now, now this like lighter purple color right here represents active loss mitigation. The darker purple represents delinquency, okay? Now the top one is active foreclosure. Now the extensions were good till about right here. This is May 1st of 2023, okay? So it really didn't start happening as far as the lack of extensions until June. So June's right here, you guys. And what I wanna point out is how active loss mitigation is getting way, way, 
worse. So it is unraveling because of the lack of extensions. Do you see that light purple line just really getting, I mean, substantially worse? I mean, it's probably got, what would you say, guys, twice as bad in about, what, three to four months? So active loss mitigation is absolutely exploding, but so is delinquencies. Delinquencies are highest it's been, I think, this entire time. So we have a higher delinquency rate right now for forbearance plans than we have this whole time. No one's talking about that. Everyone's looking at the delinquencies for mortgages. What we're not looking at, and shame on me, are the forbearance plans that are delinquent. Holy smokes. Again, look at the trajectory of active loss mitigation. Now, the bottom going up is the performance. So you can see the performance is just, I mean, it's got so much worse, guys, in the last three months. Look at that. The performance of these forbearance plans it's tanking. In fact, the last time the performances were this low was, let's see, December of 2020. So we have big changes happening right now in the forbearance sector. Is that not eye-opening to you guys? It's starting to make sense now. Essentially, the CARES Act is one giant smoke screen. It's very hard to see what's going on. It seems like every other day that I'm finding out that there's a, some COVID program that's still pumping money into some sector of the economy. When's it going to stop? This is absolutely shocking. Now what I want to do is, is I want to show you guys that foreclosures can actually explode in less than two years. The way I'm going to do that is, is let me show you guys some stats when it comes to the last great financial crisis. And then I'm gonna show you the delinquency rates right now with FHA mortgages, which are absolutely skyrocketing. It's literally the performance on FHAs when we compare it to any other loan, it is way, way worse. And I'll show you that here in a minute, but let's look at the stats for 2006. I'm gonna to try to zoom into each line so you can see this a lot more. But the first thing I wanna do is point out how many loans right now, and this is as of September of 2023. So right now in serious delinquency, remember the serious delinquencies are the homeowners that are right on the verge of foreclosure. These are the people that the COVID forbearance plans have been protecting. Right now, we have 454,000 people in serious delinquencies. Now, that's a lot, you guys. Let me direct your attention to right here. This is the end of 2006, when we peaked in the housing market. We only have about 80,000 less people right now in serious delinquency versus 2006. Again, you guys, we are extremely close to 2006, but really what I wanna point out is how everything can essentially change if we look and just move forward two years, okay? So we go to 2006 to 2008, look at this guys. It went from about 537,000 to 1.75 million. Again, 1.75 million. Holy smokes you guys so in two years it went up three times so don't just automatically think that the foreclosure situation is never going to happen that we'll never have a foreclosure crisis and i'm going to tell you guys right now the reason why this spiraled out of control job loss there was lit it was so hard to get a job back then no one can pay their mortgage and that's really what we see here let me fast forward to 2009 in 2009 it goes to 2.9 million so in three years, you guys, I just want you to think about this. We go from 537,000, three years later, we go to 2.9. That's almost six times more serious delinquencies in only three years. One other thing I want you guys to pay attention to is how long it took people to go into foreclosure at the end of 2007. And this was also a result of the lack of hope. For example, I moved out of my house two weeks after I knew I couldn't pay my mortgage because I just lost hope and I gave up. But back then it was 258 days to foreclosure. Fast forward to right now, you guys, we're at 1,014 days. Do you see that? 1,014 days before we went into lockdowns, we were sitting at 764 days. So I believe as these forbearance plans unwind, I think this is gonna get much lower because right now, you guys, People could basically stay in their house for three years without making a mortgage payment and still keep their house before it goes into foreclosure. Comment below and let me know if you think three years is too much time. Maybe you think it's not enough time, but I'm interested to hear what you think.
Comment below, don't forget to do that. I'm really anxious to see. Before I get to my conclusion, let me show you guys a little bit on what's going on with FHA mortgages. You guys can really see the delinquency rate for FHA mortgages, which is in black, is substantially, substantially higher than anything else, the GSEs, the VAs, portfolio, it's, it's super high. In fact, this is the highest it's been since about 2014. Ask yourself why that is. One of the primary reasons why FHAs have a way higher delinquency rate right now. And it's like, I think it looks like what, 10%? How the heck are 10% of FHA mortgages delinquent right now? How's that possible? When, when the other ones are what, like under 2%, like 2 and 3%, that's shocking to me. But the reason that is, is FHA has the loosest guidelines when it comes to borrowers qualifying for a mortgage. In fact, with FHA mortgages, your back end debt to income ratio could be 56.99% of your gross income. So it's extremely loose when compared to conventional mortgages and debt to income ratio. FHA loans are the only product or investor class where delinquency rates are above their pandemic entry point. Again, you guys, it's above pre-pandemic and it's sitting at 109 basis points above 2019 September level. There are several consumer debt categories that are actually skyrocketing with delinquency. So add FHA mortgages, even though conventional mortgages, FVA mortgages, USDA mortgages are not seeing that, we do see that with FHA or the more subprime, if you will, loans. The last thing I want to do is I want to put this in perspective. If you guys want to go buy a house right now, so be it. But understand by doing so, we are entering a housing market right now that is as unaffordable as it was during the 1980s with a bigger asset bubble than 2008. In fact, to get back to long-term affordability levels, that would require a combination of a 4.4% reduction in interest rates. So interest rates being in the low 3%, high 2%, and or a 62% raise in median household income. That would be nice to make 62% more money. Or, and this is crazy, a 38% decline in the median home price, none of which are likely to fully solve today's challenges alone. In conclusion, here's what I believe is going to happen when it pertains to foreclosures. I think we're going to get a double whammy. I think we're going to have a first kind of a surge of foreclosures, but this is going to be as a result of no more extensions for the emergency forbearance program. So I think we're going to have an immediate spike going into 2024, but I think that initial spike is going to be short lived. I think we're still due for a massive foreclosure event. Maybe it's not going to top 2009, but I think the problem problem with foreclosures is getting bigger and bigger and bigger for anyone that purchased a home after 2022. The amount of people that are putting themselves in foreclosure risk is absolutely overwhelming. So again, I think we're going to see a spike in foreclosures going into the early part of 2024, but I think it's going to be short lived. I think the real problem are the people that are purchasing right now. And I think that as more time goes on, we're going to start to see that crack apart. And we will especially see that start to happen when and if unemployment becomes unhinged. Now, other than that, guys, I hope you guys got some new value, insights, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck and I hope you win.